It's official now, but Taurus and Adebayo is set to become Enzo Maresca's first signing in this summer Windini. So, it's only right, it's only fair that I analyse and go through the best parts of Tosin's game so we can understand how good is Tosin at a bio. So my friends, if you guys are excited by this news, if you feel like this Nini is a responsible, smart business decision to make because we are signing a towering centre back with great experience on a free contract, then hit that like button. Let's try and get 3k likes for free agent Tosin. I hope you guys enjoy, sit back, relax and let's dissect what Adebayo is about. Now, one thing you'll hear me say consistently throughout the summer is shout out to Nino12x for making yet again another great compilation highlighting all the best parts of Tolson's game. And I think right from the start, this is a great representation of an intelligent part of Tolson's game. And that's how he orientates his body. Now, look at this situation. There's a counter-attack against him. Right now, Tolson's thinking this. I need to slow down the pace of this attacking player's game so my teammates have more time to recover and regroup so we can snuff this potential counter-attack down. Now, the attacker is hoping that Tolson is going to panic in this situation, he'll feel the pressure and he'll sell his next action by making a quick, impatient decision to try and get the ball. If he does that, he will get skip pass. But focus on the body orientation of Tolson. He's kind of adjacent to the ball and to his man. And look at where his head is. He is focused solely on the ball and the direction is set to go in. And by standing in this like sideways orientation, it means that he can change positions on a fly a lot easier. He can determine the next moves of the attacking player. And I focus on this point because now you're playing for us. Our main danger, most times defensively, outside of set pieces, will come from counter-attacking situations because if we're dominating possession, the only attacks the opposition are gonna have are going to come from counter-attacks. So how do you cope in these situations? How do you cope with the pressure, with your composure? And I think this is a great example to show what Tolson's about. Again, look how he just completely dominates that duel. He's got great tackling reach, being 6-5, long legs. And of course, he flicks the ball away and just kills that attack then. So that was great play by Tolson. I think when it comes to defending out wides, wouldn't say he's necessarily the best, but he's strong. And I think he's stronger than De Sassi, but I think the part that's the best thing about him, I think, is his passing range. Wow, what a pass that is. He can connect the field with short passes, medium passes, long passes, in behind, switch balls, between the lines. You're seeing a, dis, you know, a great variation of technique behind the pass too. And obviously coming from Man City's academy, that's gonna be a part of your game, you've got pattern, right? So yeah, I think that's the best impressive part about him. And I think that's why Mareska actually was the one to call for a signing because he has experience. He is familiar with Tolson during their time at Man City's academy. But again, during these examples here too, I think another thing I like about Tolson is that he's quite a well-rounded defender in the sense that at Fulham this season, as the season was ending, he was playing the cover role alongside like Calvin Bassey. And um, equally, he can also play that more proactive role of stepping up, stepping out of his defensive line, to engage and close down the danger. He can do both. So that's a nice little thing to have. And a defender, I feel, will have more of a squad role. But knowing our injury history, most likely, you know, he'll get substantial minutes in game time, especially with Conference League football. So yeah, again, you're noticing how he's engaging out wide a lot of times. He's comfortable in those areas. He's not selling himself, which is good. And you know what? Let me tell you something about his uh, heading technique. I think last season he had like 67 or 68% aerial uh, headers one percentage rate, but I've noticed his technique. Now look at his arms. Because he's so tall, he takes advantage of his height. And I like players that take advantage of their physical blessings and their physical advantages. Now a Havertz wants to be backing into a Tosin. You want to put him off balance, right? So you can spin him, so you can turn him. But because Tolson knows how to use his height, he's got a good distance away from Havertz. And look at his positioning of his arms. They're like around his shoulders to pin Havertz down from attempting to win an aerial. Because then Tolson will then use his natural height advantage to win that header then. And that's one thing you'll notice time and time again in this uh, video. And as I said, I like players that know how to take advantage of what they're blessed with. 
great switch ball. Um, yeah, you know, we need someone that can connect the field, especially if we win the ball back quickly and we have to release a runner in behind. But I like the fact that against players who can dribble on the ground like Tolson, he can defend aerially and he can defend on the ground. I'm not saying he's like the second coming of, I don't know, Lillian Taram or something like that, but he's a good, well-rounded player with experience. And I do think in a squad role, he makes a bit of sense. Good composure, releases it wide. That is good play. And how is that not a goal? <laughs> but again, he can step up, he can carry the ball. He's got that composure. I think he's quite classy, to be honest with you. Yeah, carries it forward, evades the pressure. Nice two-footed dribbling to open up the angles. Does it again, again. You know, he's hard to press. He's not going to panic under pressure. And I think maybe this is why Mareska wants to bring a player that he's familiar with because he knows the ways of possession and what is expected from him. I do think at times though, maybe he can clear the ball more than he has to. Maybe being at Fulham, the context of the pressure is different, I don't know. But moments like this, I want to see more of when he's playing for us next season. And then yeah, nice little play to cut inside and a super driven cross. and. I love driven crosses and driven passes because, again, you're connecting the field a lot faster. You need to have great technique to pull it off. It's not the easiest technique to get right, especially at the speed of play too. And it kind of reminds me of like hudson Adoy. Um, He's a great crosser and passer of the ball as well. And a great weight with his passing. And obviously, this is one of the key things, right? Heading, attacking set pieces. Um, now that we have a set piece specialist in Bernardo Cueva. I guess it makes sense for us to also sign some taller players as well to fully take advantage of this new role we're creating in this club, right? And I do think that Tolson has shown that he's very astute from winning headers in the box, astute from set pieces, and hopefully he can follow in the footmarks of players of forum like Cahill's, Ivanovic's, players that didn't come with much hype, came for very modest and humble fees, but over the seasons, they really proved what they were about for the team and they were very reliable. And Tolson, with his experience in the league, could have that. But, I mean, look at this goal here. I really like this goal, the near post flick on. I think if you're a defender defending against Tolson at the near post, my God, you're going to you're gonna panic, right? And I think this is a great goal. He's judging the trajectory of that cross. Concentration's really good. He's a tall guy, so to even attempt that flick on to the far post, he has to kind of stoop his body low to connect with that cross in, which he does. And then he just kind of uses the trajectory of that cross to guide it away from the keeper. Great goal. And if we can have someone like him attacking near post, knowing that I think Brentford scored quite a lot of goals from like near post flick ones. Torreson could be quite handy in these areas, knowing that, yeah, he's going to feel very comfortable and confident in the air against most players, right? So, yeah, that's a nice goal and hopefully adds to helping us score more set-piece goals. But again, super, super pass. Like if you're a runner in behind, you wanna, you're wanna, you not making this run for fun for no reason, are you? But equally at the same time, you know, I think it's very easy to maybe listen to a video like this and only just keep hearing praise, 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 praise. But at the same time, Torreson's a good player who definitely has great qualities, but he's not going to be the first choice defender. He's not one of the best defenders in the country, right? And I think it's due to small margins like decision-making. Like here, this is a very ambitious ball to play to the striker. And I just think maybe the passing weight wasn't perfect then and it was hard for that striker to control that. The option could have been just to play on the ground instead. Again, another good ball over the top. If you're Medweke, if you're Mudrik, you're going to have some fun and you're going to feel confident about making these runs in behind, right? Yeah, wins that back. Again, his technique with the arms, like he uses his arms just to create that safe space to put off 
the opposition attacker off balance. And then he takes advantage of those lanky legs with his tackling reach. It looks simple, but I keep stressing at this level, it's all about the fine margins, the details. That's what makes the difference. Ian doesn't necessarily win that then, but he's looking to get back in position when he doesn't win that tackle. Wins that header. Arms again, heads it away. Ooh, you know, ambitious pass. Maybe at times a criticism can be. Obviously, he's such a good passer, but maybe he can overdo it at times, right? Maybe it's not always the best uh, situation to play the ambitious ball all the time. I think maybe you can pick the balance a bit better. But again, it's a different system, different context. We'll keep the ball on the ground a lot more. But of course, Maresca's football encourages the switch balls. So there will be moments for Torreson to display that. But I just don't think maybe he has to be as ambitious when he's playing for us next season. Again, good defending. Sticks with him and then forces the situation back. Good anticipation. You know, most defenders aren't spinning him and he's got his arms around you. Nice, okay, okay. Could have skips past, doesn't win that then. Maybe it's best because most likely that could be a foul. But I, li I like how, um, Again, engages, engages, isn't able to win that, but at least he's putting pressure uh, behind on that player then. Again, he'll look to play that pass in behind. But it's a shame that we don't necessarily have that big physical target man that could maybe take advantage more of a long pass, but Equally at the same time, let's not forget that maybe Torreson came from a, a, a much more sophisticated academy and club in Man City. So some of the expectations and demands placed in terms of what you're supposed to do will be completely different being at a Fulham and a Man City. So let's understand that context too. But anyway, yeah. See, the advantage of being stupidly tall. Um, yeah, if he was like a few inches smaller after like not winning the first duel then, there's no way that he wins the second one. So that's the high advantage there. <laughs> Just able to get a little bit of purchase on that ball then. But here, moments like this, being a bit too ambitious, I think there was no reason. Because if we look at the clip again, I think the Fulham midfield player is calling for the ball. He's dropped into the space. He's completely unmarked. Torreson didn't have to play the ambitious ball then. It was much better to play it into midfield then. The angle was open up. So decision making, fine small margins and details that separates like the very best from the greats to the good to the okays to the not so goods etc etc but technically i mean yeah the guy is already clear to be honest with you there's not many things he can't do without the ball so it's a big positive and to be honest at this age he's at now he is reaching his peak he is getting better and i do think that he could even find even more form being around a stronger, more capable technical squad. So let's see how that goes. But in moments like this, in terms of aerials, I think it will add so much to the team. That's something that can lack at times. And I do think that in terms of the finances and the business behind this deal, it's a smart move. I think it's a considered move. It's a careful move. And it shows that there's a foresight and planning behind this. So, you know, I accept, even though I wouldn't necessarily have gone for him, because as I've been saying for over a whole year now, I don't think we have to sign any defenders realistically. I'd accept we might sign one, but that's if we're replacing someone. But I think with what we have, with Wesley coming back, I, th I thought we were already good. But I'm looking at Tosa now and quite clearly, you know what I mean? We'll see what he does. Great business on the free. And yeah, if Pereska also advocating for him, then I'm going to trust my new manager. And let's see how this plays out. And let's look back on this at the end of next season. So my friends, I hope you guys enjoy 
Share your thoughts and opinions. Are you happy with this move? Let us all know. And on that note, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. See you all later.